بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Good afternoon. This is the uh, Lahore Media organization bringing you the latest broadcast on reflections on the Holy Quran and this is broadcast number 301. I start with an apology uh because we uh, haven't been able to uh, broadcast for a few weeks but uh, we hope that uh, that won't be repeated just to remind you that uh, the uh, lahore mdr jamaat organization was created by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Sahib. And uh, he taught us that uh, although other Muslim friends and brothers, they want uh, to bring a new prophet after the Holy Prophet Muhammad. In fact, now no Prophet can come. Not an old one, not a new one, and and so on. Sorry, I just noticed that uh, we don't uh, or we didn't have any audio on one of the services on which we broadcast. So now uh, it shows me that we do have uh, audio on that uh, broadcast. Anyway, I was talking about the fact that uh, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Sahib, he taught that uh, um, although others say that uh, after the Holy Prophet Muhammad, some say an old prophet, some say a new prophet can come. This is wrong. The Holy Prophet was the last prophet. And after him, no prophet can now come. And that is the end of the story. <coughs> Similarly, People say that uh, God now does not speak to human beings. But uh, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Sahib taught that God will continue to speak to human beings until the last day. And Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's own claim was that of being uh, the reformer, the mujaddid of the 14th century of Hijra. And this is what uh, his gravestone said. And Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed taught us that although other people say some verses of the Holy Quran have been abrogated, this is untrue. No verse of the Holy Quran was, is, or ever shall be abrogated. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by some uh, uh, messages that I'm receiving. So let's turn to today's broadcast. 
which is about chapter 2, verse 98 of the Holy Quran. And uh, let me remind you that uh, we are looking at the meanings of individual words of the Holy Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ala qad qalbika bi iznillahi mufaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi wa hudan wa bushubwa Lil Mu'minin <coughs> Actually, I was uh, I recited the wrong verse of the Holy Quran. I recited part of the uh, verse 97. My apologies for that. Man kana adun wallillahi wa malaikatihi wa rusulihi wa jibreel wa mikaal fa inna allah adun Whoever is an enemy to Allah <coughs> and his angels and his messengers and Gabriel and Michael, then surely Allah is an enemy to disbelievers. So today the verse, the word we are going to look at is Wa <coughs> Rusulihi. <coughs> so let us turn to that and see what that says. Um, <clears throat> where are we? Here we are. This, uh, the root of this word is a uh, three letters, wa, seen, and lab. And in total, you find in the Holy Quran eight words made from a from the combination of these three letters and uh, in total they occur in the holy quran 513 times 332 times as the noun rasul now if you speak uh, arabic or urdu or farsi and so on you would be familiar with that word it means a messenger. But uh, what we have done is that uh, in Urdu and, and so on, we seem to have restricted its use only to Allah's messengers. But we'll see from the Holy Quran that in the Quran the using is not restricted to that. And then 130 times as the verb arsala, and then 35 times as a passive participle, mursal, mursal, sorry. <coughs> and then fewer mentioned six times, four times and uh, that kind of thing so if we now go to mufradat and have a look at that <coughs> arrislu its basic meaning is to start on a journey to start walking gently and slowly Nakatun Rislatun is the expression used for uh, um, a she camel that works, that, that, that walks 
gently. And the word Rasul comes from this as well. So th this is worth remembering. Because what happens in the Holy Quran is that uh, we have a root and it has a basic meaning. And then we build on that basic meaning. We make new words by adding other characters to the root. Um, so uh, let us look at that <clears throat> and see how the Holy Quran does this. And the, another thing to, to mention is that the same word can be used for the message and the messenger. And in chapter 9, verse 128, we have Lakadja Akum Rasulum bin Anfusikum. O people, from among you, a Rasul, a messenger will come. In chapter 26. Verse 16, it says, Inna Rasulu Rabbil Alameen. And we were sent by the Lord of the Universes. Now, the plural of Rasul is Rusul. And uh, what we have to remember is that when these words are used, Rasul and Rasul in the Holy Quran, it may mean human beings or it may mean angels. Innahu laqawlu rasulin kareem. Chapter 81 verse 19. That this, that's the Holy Quran. Is uh, delivered by an honorable messenger. And here it is said that the word Rasul means Gabriel, the angel that brought God's instructions. Inna Rusulun Rabbi Kalai Yasilu Ilak. And uh, they've been sent by your Rabb. Inna Rusulun Rabbika. Your Rabb has sent them. But they won't be able to get to you. Then sometimes a Rasul is mentioned by name. Walakadja at Rusulona Ibrahima Bil Bushra. Chapter 11, verse 69. And when our uh, angels, when our Rasuls, Rusulona, when our angels brought the good news. To Abraham. Here the word plural is used and uh, it means angels. Wal Mursalati Urfa. Here Mursalat. That's used for the message itself. By the angels who were sent with Allah's message. Bala wa rusulona ladaihim yaktubun chapter 43 verse 8 They hear and 
the angels which are with them, they note, they write, Yatubuna. Here, Rusalona. Again, used for angels. But sometimes it does refer to human beings, sometimes it names them Wama Muhammadun Illa Rasul. Chapter 3, verse 143. And Muhammad is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is no more than a messenger. So, here, the Holy Prophet is called Rasul. Previously, we saw angels called Rasul. Ya Ayyuhar Rusulu. Balligh ma unzila ilayka min rabbit. Chapter 5, verse 167. O Rasul. Ya Yuhar Rusul, O Rasul, O Messenger. The uh, commands, the instructions that have been revealed to you from your Lord, then deliver them to people as they were delivered to you. Here again, a human being, the Holy Prophet Muhammad is being addressed. So the word Rasul is used for a human being. Waba nursilul mursilina illa mubashirina wa munzirin. Chapter 6, verse 48. And the purpose of sending messengers is that uh, they gave the good news and the warnings. Good news, what will happen if you do the right thing and warnings, what will happen if you don't do the right thing. You know, just think of your teacher who says, well, you know, if you work hard and revise and so on, you'll get, you'll get a good grade. If you don't, you won't. So there's good news of a good grade and a warning, depending on what you do. But interestingly, the author of Mufradat says that it can mean either angels or humans. It can apply to both. And in another place, that was the word Rasul applying to humans and angels and a difference of interpretation. But here's another one. Ya ayyuhar rusulukulu minat tayyibati wahmulu khaliha. Chapter 23 verse 51. And we give instructions, we command our Rusul, our messengers. To eat what is pure and good and do good. Now, the author of Mufradat is of the opinion that when Allah says this, Ya Yuhur Rusulu, then it doesn't just mean the Holy Prophet Muhammad, but it also means all his companions. So you can see even in the Holy Quran, the word Rusul is being used for non-prophets. And that interpretation is being given not by an Ahmadi, but, but by non-Ahmadis to say that it means the same thing. And <clears throat> so this is very important 
because sometimes people say, oh, you know, MDs believe something very strange and different and so on. But when we look in their books, you find exactly the same thing. It's just that some people have restricted the meaning of certain Arabic words when they're used in Urdu or Farsi. And that is what causes the problem. Chapter 6, verse 6. وَأَرْسَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِدْرَارًا And from heavens, from skies, what came down? Heavy rain. وَأَرْسَلْنَا Here what's coming down, what's being sent is water. But it's also applied when someone is sent with some authority. Chapter 6 verse 61 وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظَ And he appoints And he appoints angels to guard over you. But then in another place, فَأَرْسَلَ فِرْعَوْنُ فِي الْمَدَائِنِ حَاشِرِينَ Chapter 26 verse 53 To gather together people, Pharaoh did what? فَأَرْسَلَ He sent his messenger, messengers. I'm laboring this point so that you understand that uh, difficulties are, uh, are arising. Why? Because, because the meanings of the words which were in Arabic were much wider. And what did we do? We restricted them when we got them into Urdu. And then when someone used the, uh, the word as it is used in Arabic, people said, uh, he's a kafir, he's this, he's that. Chapter 35, verse 2. Ma yaftihi Allahu lin nasi mar rahmati fala munsika laha wa ma yumsik fala mursila lahu min baadi. And God can open the doors of the Blessings, prayers of blessings. If he does that, then no one can close the, those doors. But if he shuts those doors, then after that, no one can open them. Now, here, the word is being used with Amsak Yawa ma yumsik fala mursila lahu So <clears throat> but the main thing is this the basic meaning is that it applies to something that walks slowly and gently and softly. Why is that important? It is important because that is the purpose. That is the purpose of the coming of a prophet. 
which is that he should kindly and gently and slowly reform people. What is the uh, the she camel to which this is supposed to apply to? That she camel walks gently and slowly because reform can only be attained slowly. And by gently explaining to people why they need to change. See, in the Holy Quran, we frequently see people saying to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, well, you know, our ancestors used to do this, and now you're telling us that uh, this is wrong. How can that be? So if you just attack their ancestors, you're going to annoy them. So you have to do this kindly and gently. That was all they knew. That was the old guidance. But things have changed. Etc. To encourage people. To encourage people to change. To improve, to reform themselves. If you just attack them and their ancestors and so on, and, you know, they'll simply say, well, you know, what's it got to do with you? Go away. And you would have defeated the object of your coming. So, let us remember that. And with that, we are nearly at the end of the time for today's broadcast. So I take my leave of you and uh, inshallah we'll meet again tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum, khuda hafiz and goodbye.